Hi guys, hi everyone. Uh, this is Brain Rich Kids and we have Dr. Uh, Porter here with us. We are doing this uh, podcast to educate you on some other interesting tech and tools that you can use for you by yourself or um, help your kids to do even better in terms of their brain fitness. So we have Dr. Porter. He's going to introduce himself and he introduce, uh, he's going to introduce uh, his uh, interesting device that we personally use right here. And uh, in just a few minutes, you will understand why we're so excited a bit and why you <laughs> should stick with us and learn about this tool because uh, yeah, it does awesome. make a lot of sense for you to use something like this if you already have one of our play gyms if you're in the trend if you're if you're just like uh, every other parent want to deliver the best for your kids so you should stick around for the next uh, few minutes and learn about this uh, and, yeah. and it's not only for your kids it's for you as well as yes. a parent <laughs> because you guys are doing the really hard work so, of raising great kids. So, yeah. so uh, Dr. without Porter, further ado. The floor is yours. Yeah. Okay, so my background, uh, the first book that I wrote was called Awaken the Genius. And it kind of tells my story. I was held back in second grade. I had uh, learning disabilities and I didn't realize that it was actually keyed mostly into my diet. And uh, so once my mother changed my diet, that changed, but we started to learn about, hey, what's the connection between physical fitness and brain fitness? And my dad taught me how to uh, relax and do some, um, what we called going to level. That's what the technique was called in the Silva method. And so what I've done over the course of my life is create processes that help children and adults, like you're saying, I mean, we've done studies with the mothers of autistic children to show them just taking 10 minutes out to reboot their brain makes a big difference in their stress that their body is feeling. But what we really wanna talk about is there's physical fitness. When your children are on those and in those gyms working out, you're actually working out their brain. And that's why when you work out the brain, something is called neuroplasticity, which means the brain is wiring and firing and basically getting it all to work right. That's why like martial arts and Tai Chi and, and even yoga for children is so popular because it connects the brain and any physical activities will do that. So then what we find is, hey, what can we do to extend that neuroplasticity or extend that the results of that practice and what we do that's where brain tap comes in and we're using light sound and vibration to do that and the nice thing is children love it um I'm, i still remember when we first started working with dr joquita handy who's out of orange county california and she put it on the children at first this was years ago and they just the first of all the parents said there's no way my kids will ever wear that <laughs> kids, kids love it. In fact, kids will ask uh, if they go online and just just put in hashtag brain tap, you'll see children as young as one years old. You know, wow. we have adults up to over 100 years old who have used the brain tap and children like it because they like patterns. Our brain loves patterns. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, I'm just going to give you two examples, then we can kind of talk a little bit from there. A child that is hyperactive we know their brain has an overactive alpha frequency, which is if they have too much alpha, they can, in, in, in a lot of beta, they become attention deficit because they're battling, the brain's battling for which brainwave is taking over. There's, mm -hmm. to modulate correctly, we should have about 45% beta, 30% alpha. Mm -hmm. That's very hard to do on your own. I mean, it's it, some people just naturally, let's say out of the box and <laughs> do that. But most people, they train. Like we all have, we have children who say, hey, it's time to do homework. They sit down, they have focus, they have concentration, they do it. What we find is when people start to learn with the brain tap, especially children, their brain will know, hey, I'm really focused right now. I can concentrate. Then when they get in the classroom or they get to do their homework, their brain actually remembers that. Uh, there's something that also that just as a side benefit for everyone listening, if you put broke classical music on in the background while your children are learning, they call it the Mozart effect. Mm -hmm. They've actually proved that the brain works better. They become smarter just by listening to that music. Mm -hmm. So we always tell parents, do that, number one. Number two is drink a lot of water because the brain is a hydro engine. Water is key for this. So when children are doing it, what they'll find is that that hyperactivity goes away. The um, whatever, I mean, we even have sessions that are called your parents magically know best. So, so we can tell them things. We can help to build value where the parents saying it, they don't get it, but we do it through what's called metaphor or storytelling. So mm -hmm. the children are actually listening to stories and 
they can listen through, there's over 40 sessions for children. So they can listen through and then go back and listen to the 40 stories again. And they won't remember the stories yeah. from, you know, 40 days ago. So, but, but it's really about how the brain trains through the light, sound and vibration that's happening. Yeah. So in other words, uh, from, and, and, you know, we've met before, so I, I, you know, I've seen your presentation and everything. So I'll just try to kind of uh, bring some of my prior understanding. So uh, Dr. Porter is a brain scientist, right? And uh, he works on these devices and everything, but just to kind of explain it or, you know, to you in a little bit more uh, simple terms, when you wake up, you should feel energized and you should feel very, very focused. And that's what uh, you guys call it, uh, alpha state, right? Mm -hmm. So brain emits uh, certain frequencies, certain waves and devices and that we currently have are able to pick them up. So in the morning, it's supposed to be in the alpha, uh, alpha way. If you wake up and you feel foggy, tired, sluggish, you're probably somewhere in your delta, right? Mm -hmm. So um, to make it simple, uh, kind of, this is how I explain it to myself, right? So if <laughs> I want to wake up and be focused, but I cannot because I underslept, I, mm -hmm. you know, whatever happened to me, I didn't drink enough water and things like that. So what I do in the morning, I, I just put on this device and uh, Dr. Porter will explain that there are a couple of cool features in here. So uh, uh, we'll talk about the light in just a moment. So you can see that it has the lights. So those are pretty cool things. Um, these ones are about to kick in. And uh, I've noticed that uh, when I run the morning boost program, it does help me to stay sharp and focused without drinking coffee, right? So uh, you as a parent, uh, I'm pretty sure you never get enough sleep. And uh, so this is uh, something for you to consider it. <laughs> and for Absolutely. your kids, right? So when we talk about learning disabilities, learning difficulties, you name it. Uh, that could be because uh, your your kid's brain might be have conflict in those uh, brain waves, right? And this device, the way I explain it, it sends this uh, frequency and then your brain is resonated with it and, and gets into the zone where it's supposed to be. So I, I don't know if I explained it yeah. right. But no, that's great. I understand. Yeah, yeah, we call that digital coffee because you don't need coffee to do that. The coffee is actually triggering those, synthetically triggering those brain waves. I'm not against coffee. I like coffee myself, but you know, you don't need that. If you need that to wake up in the morning, then that means you're not neurologically conditioned. Wow. Um, so when you, when you wake up in the morning, we should be energized. Like in my talk, I was talking about how in nature, if we were still living, you know, a hundred thousand years ago or 10,000 years ago, we would, the heat from the earth would wake us up. The light from the sun would come up. We would be energized mm -hmm. because we would be in tune. And because we're so disconnected now and so, so busy doing things, waking up with alarms and things of that nature, it's, our nervous system is thrown off. So when you showed the headset there, the lights in the ears, that's one of the ones that people always go, what in the world do we have lights in the ears for? Well, the, of course, the children don't need to know this, but what happens is our body, every cell of our body has something called chromoforms. These are like little batteries at the cellular level that hold energy. The energy that our body gets Mm -hmm. is from light, sound, and vibration. Now we eat food, but our body has to break that down into energy, right? Mm -hmm. So, but we also get energy from music. I mean, we've all been to parties where we might not have really wanted to be there, but they start playing music we like. We start tapping our toe. We start, yeah. and pretty soon we're dancing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people go, I didn't think you wanted to be here. And you go, well, I, the energy started moving me. Well, that's one way to think of it, but light does the same thing, right? I mean, if we're, so the way the body works, just a little science lesson here for everybody, the, the, our body all the time is doing this, but with the brain tap, we're focusing very specific frequencies of light and sound, but just walking outside does this. So when we walk outside, the hemoglobin absorbs light energy and circulates through the body and feeds something called mitochondria. Mm -hmm. Mitochondrial health is what's really important, especially for children in mm -hmm. the just to give you an idea, the kryptonite to mitochondria is sugar. You know, if you if you eat sugar, it kills mitochondria. It, it basically shuts down cell production and thinking powers. So the, the number one thing that I always tell people, if you want your kid to be smarter, eliminate sugar or as much as you can. I mean, you're never going to do it because they're going to go to a friend's house. They're going to have a brownie or, you know, whatever. And you're not going to know about it or they're, but if you can basically be feeding them healthy and getting them some fiber because fiber, what it does is slow release sugar. But it, with what the light does is this is energy that doesn't have to be digested, doesn't have to be metabolized. Basically the, the cells absorb that energy, the mitochondria absorb that energy 
And the nice thing about bringing it through retinal flashing, which you mm -hmm. showed the visor there, there's lights in there. Yeah. And yeah. That, you have to yeah. watch them. Yeah. And the, when you see that light, your eyes are closed, but your body, your eyes are still absorbing that light into the brain. And also the blood that flows through the ears mm -hmm. flows from the ears into the brain. So you're getting light energy into the brain. And this is what, what we need just from regular everyday thinking, acting, what they call cellular metabolism. We have a lot of toxins. So this is for children as well as adults. We need to give the energy to the brain so it can do the processes that it needs. Children today are more stressed out than ever before. Unfortunately, they've been bombarded with a lot of fear here recently in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, to imagine, I was, just at, I was just out yesterday uh, in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina here. Mm -hmm. and people, they don't have to wear the mask anymore here. I mean, they, they took it off the airplanes, everything, it's gone. Yeah. But there's still people wearing the mask and it does nothing for you. But they're doing it because they're afraid or they want to protect somebody, you know, yeah. one of those two. Re and it doesn't do either. But because they've been conditioned in the fear factor, fear, something called psychoimmunology happens, which means your psychology affects the way your immune system functions. So if you want your child to have a high functioning immune system, we need to get their brain functioning at its highest level, make mm -hmm. them optimistic thinkers, positive uh, it's okay to make mistakes. You know, that's one of the things we teach them. A, a lot of times, some kids are so perfectionist that that stress level, the stress that kids are under today is far more than anything we ever experienced, or at least I ever experienced growing up. I mean, uh -huh. the, um, you know, my, my uh, grandkids are just busy all the time doing something. I mean, they have a busier schedule than I do, you know, and so they're, they're, all, they're always uh, doing something. Right. So, I mean, taking the time to recover mm -hmm. for a parent is really important. But for children to teach them that it's okay to take time to recover in a healthy way, because yeah. a lot of people look for ways to escape that are not healthy, mm -hmm. you know, and so if you want to raise a very healthy child, you want to give it the flexibility, we call it behavioral flexibility. Mm -hmm. in, in India, for instance, we have a school there called the creative school. Mm -hmm. And we we support them, but they actually do a lot of research with us. Every classroom has a brain tap in it. And wow. the reason is when a child gets stressed out, instead of them acting out, which happens when you're stressed out, if somebody says, my child is too angry, upset. Well, they're angry and upset because of energy. They don't know how to move energy in the body. They don't know how to process their thoughts. They need time to slow down, relax. What they really need is something like brain tap. If it's not brain tap, they got to get something to help them to do that. And yeah. how old are they? So what is the what is the good age essentially? So when when we say four kids... years old, four years old and older is is best. Uh, at the school, the school is actually um, a pre a preschool all the way through college prep in India. So they also have a twelve station brain tap room for their soccer team because they're you know it seems like sports teams always get everything first. It's and they're really big into soccer there, so that's that's a big deal, and and so we put that in. But I, I think that if they can do this at a minimum of uh, every other day, because the nervous system needs to be trained, uh, just like lifting weights, when people think about physical exercise, of course, they could get on your gym every day, a couple times a day, you know, that's going to be good, the, the more they can do it, the better. When they're moving their, again, when they're moving their extremities, we actually have tracked how the brain develops. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why our brain developed the way it did is because we started getting up on our hind legs and walking and exercising and you know building muscle mass mm -hmm. the more muscle mass a person has really the smarter they they should be and you know if they work these two together they'll have a very powerful brain fitness and physical fitness yeah that's what we always preach you know we say get these play gyms early so your kids can start moving right because literally by them moving uh, they, they they impact the brain development so and, and really developing the um, childhood development is so impactful from that age on three four years old is like anything you do they're gonna absorb so absolutely yeah. we absolutely agree so, so let me ask you a little bit more specific questions so uh, first of all i love these device uh, we actually have two yeah. you know one for me one for her <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but uh you know what's interesting? Um, so first of all, I, 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 I was curious, you know, like these lights, I'm like, how do they work? And you were just explaining, so I kind of wanted to reiterate. They're actually, it's a little bit more than if you want me to go a little deeper. They're, they're yeah. actually look like they're solid there, but they're actually flashing. And yeah. there's seven different Noger frequencies. Dr. Noger is the one who, who invented what's called auricular therapy, which uh. means 
they uh, acupuncturists will use different lasers or, or needles. They'll hit different parts of the ear. What we can do with light, they call it photobiomodulation, which means the photons flow through the body, through the hemoglobin in the blood, as I explained earlier. So mm -hmm. we're bringing that in, but that light is tuned light. It's not just light. It's not just red light and blue light. It actually has a frequency to it that we know the body responds to. And so when they have that on, that's helping to shut off the, there's two different states of being within the, the body. There's more than that. Let's just simplify it. There's one we call the thriving brain and one the surviving brain. So when you're in the thriving brain, you can rest, relax, heal. You can think better. You can respond. You can treat your parents and yourself better, you know, things like that. If you're in the survivor brain, that means you're reactionary. You get angry, you get upset. So you can think of one side has all the positive emotions. The other side has all the negative emotions. And that's what drives behavior. Emotion drives behavior. So if we can reduce the negative emotions, we can reduce the buildup. Think of your body like a battery that builds up during the day. It's either building up with positive emotions. Like if you have a great day and everything's going great, you come home, you know, and you have a great evening. But if you had a bad day at work, oh no, what's going to happen at home? You know, it's, you, know you gotta mm -hmm. somehow clear that out. So you don't carry that negativity into the next experience. Yeah, I've come across that. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, from psychology. They've done so many experiments, right? So when you're in a negative state, they actually have, I forgot how many levels of it, what is it, 12 or whatnot. But essentially, it's saying the lower you go, so kind of like the more negative you go, the higher it is to be creative, the higher, the harder it is to be creative, the harder it is to even study or engage in something mm -hmm. productive. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a negative zone, all you want to be is uh, to be engaged in destructive uh, activities, the, you know, and uh, yeah, Paul's brain in. So um, I wanted to jump uh, into into the app. So some of my friends, they actually just use the BrainTap app. So I have it. Uh, I have it on my phone. I'll just show it super quick, you know, while it's loading. Uh, where is the focus? Uh, it's loading right here. So um, we got to say, OK, uh, offline, right, because I put it on it. So and it has a lot of interesting. Hold this yep. so I can uh, give it. A, so it has a lot of uh, this very cool uh, programs, right? So there's one for sleep, which I really, really like. And there's one that I call the power user, right? This is where this is my go to. And uh, I'm kind of doing it in the reverse, so I cannot really see it. But I just wanted to show people how detailed it is that you can actually, you know, if, once you know what you're doing, how you can literally do a gamma go, go training. Go to the, the children and learning. Yeah, I wanted to go to children and learning and to show it. So right here, I have it open right here. Yeah. So I, I want you to say a couple, couple words about this uh, super quick children and learning uh, uh, section. Yeah, there's, there, yeah, there's different uh, sessions there because we want them to listen to something different and new to build that neuroplasticity. And really, mm -hmm. that's what we that's why we call it brain fitness to exercise the brain and get yeah. working better. Each session is encoded differently. So each time they're going to get it, we've what I've done is I've taken stories like to build in kindness or forgiveness, mm -hmm. all of the different traits that usually people have to wait till they go through a midlife crisis <laughs> to realize they need. We want to empower the children to have the capacity to think not just to take orders, but to process their experiences. The, when I, be, being a psychologist, what I see in the, in the clinic is that people were never told how to manage their emotions, how mm -hmm. to manage their experiences. Mm -hmm. Everybody has good things happen to them. Everybody has bad things happen to them. But how we process them is what ends at the end of the day. That's what shows up. So some people have had really ba bad things happen to them, but it doesn't show up in their life as a negative experience. It shows up as a learned experience that, that teaches them to be stronger and have more resilience. Mm -hmm. But there's other people that had a really good life, but they still had a negative propensity and they just focused on the negative. So we're going to teach them how to think differently um, through, through metaphor, through story. So they don't have to really, it's not like they're doing, it's a lesson, but they don't really know it because it's done with play, just like your, your gym. You know, they're, they're building up their body and making themselves stronger through play. We wanna make sure, and that's the best way we learn is through, you know, entertainment that's fun, but it also has a message. And that's really what they're doing.
So I remember when we spoke at one of the conferences we went to, you mentioned that sometimes kids don't like to, you know, to, to have these headphones on and the lights flashing in. So there's a little bit of a learning uh, slash adaptation period. And then after that, they love it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, can you just uh, say a few words, maybe like bring some case studies or examples of how did it help and to whom and, and how did it look like? What was the process? Yeah. When, we, when we go to one sp the spectrum, let's say we go to the autism spectrum, uh, that would be the most severe case, right? That we would look at. They use a good number of them don't like anything on their ears, over their bodies. Now, if the parent sits with them, even for a minute at first, and then plays it in the room. Mm -hmm. In fact, sometimes I recommend just getting the app at first, playing it in the room, let them go to sleep, play it right before they go to sleep and say, hey, we're going to listen to a little story. What they'll find is they'll start saying, I want to hear Dr. Porter. I want to hear Dr. Patrick. They'll just start saying my name. I've had so many parents say that because I'm going to, I'm going to help them go to sleep. And just like a parent who isn't sleeping well, children want to sleep well. Yeah. And, but if they have a lot of fear and worry, it's going to, it's going to disrupt their sleep. And if what will happen is the algorithm will help them go to sleep. So the parent doesn't have to just say, hey, let's listen. It's just like reading a book before going to bed. Yeah. I still think you should do that. That's not a thing that you should not do. But when they're done with that, say, now we're going to do a little time to, to process that. Let's listen to a story. And even if you don't, once they hear a few of them, they're going to know what to do. Because I'll say to them, you can keep your eyes open or close your eyes. It doesn't matter. Um, most of them will close their eyes. And what they'll find is that once the brain gets into that deeper state of alpha, they'll just continue the process into deep sleep and that's fine. So that's number one. Number two is if you have someone who's not on the spectrum, you know, a child that's just maybe hyperactive or maybe you want to help them with learning and things like that is I would, I would, if they're not able to settle down and do their homework, mm -hmm. I would, this gives them, the child will look at it as a way to procrastinate, but you're actually helping them. You say, yeah. let's do a session before yeah. you do your homework. So you have the energy because if their brain doesn't have the energy to learn, yeah, they're going to be daydreaming. All that time since studying is not going to do any good. Mm -hmm. And whether you're going to help them with mathematics or you're going to help them with the alphabet or you're going to help them with reading, they need that brain energy. So, yeah. but the what will happen is once they get their energy balanced, they have the energy. The best time actually is after they do something stimulating, like whether they use the gym that, that mm -hmm. you put into their homes or if they've done their homework after they're done doing their homework or after they're done with a learning lesson, then the brain has been stressed out. We don't think about it like that, but instead of having them go watch television, which is actually not really good for the brain mm -hmm. because it's, it's basically processing information for you. When they do the brain tap, what'll happen is they'll take that lesson and, and really deeply encode it. Uh, what they do in the schools, and we're in like six different schools in America as well, they call it brain prep. So if you have a if you have a child that doesn't seem to want to get up in the morning, get get busy doing it, then well, what they do is they get up 10 minutes early, they'll go into the bedroom, they'll put it on the child and say, hey, we're go ahead, you can sleep a little bit longer. They just put it on their head and they do the 10 minutes. At the end of the 10 minutes, they'll have light, they'll have so much energy and it'll be balanced energy. It won't be bouncing off the wall energy. Yeah. And yeah. then they'll be ready for school and say, now your brain's ready to learn. Yeah. And you just start, you know, doing it that way. So one of my favorite uh, sessions, are, so I know that you have a combination. You have a uh, guided meditation, uh, guided sessions versus uh, could be just the music or sounds, you know, like, uh, yeah, I, I like the variety. I like the fact that you have all the way from rain sounds to, uh, to you name it, to, to the guided meditation. So I find that. Uh, so you, you briefly said the importance of sleep. I mean, just to reiterate, you said no sugar. That was a big deal. I just <laughs> wanted everybody to hear how important it is uh, to say no sugar. Sometimes when I'm on the phone with some of our clients, I, I, you know, I kind of want to tell everybody like, hey, stop giving them sugar. But the <laughs> sleep, right? You, you kind of briefly mentioned, but it's really, really important for everybody to have a good night's sleep. So um when I started using BrainTap, I almost exclusively used it for uh, for you know falling asleep, 
And uh, we have this aura rings. We track our sleep and we, we try to see what's the impact. And we had the most amount of, you know, a deep sleep, RAM, recovery, sleep, everything uh, when we when we started using BrainTap. So I can literally see the impact of uh, just a small meditation before you have a small, just you don't even have to do anything. Just put it on and just enjoy the, the good music. So um, thank you for that. And that, that's really helpful, um, even for us, you know, even for adults or anything. I, I would I would love to touch on like maybe a small protocol uh, that you would recommend mm -hmm. uh, with the app. Um, it could be maybe one for kids and one for parents. <laughs> uh, it, your, your it, favorite. The, yeah, for the parents, we actually if they need a protocol and they don't really know what they want to work on, we actually just if you reset if you go into your app uh, and log in and log out, there's a new bundle that'll show up. It's called Jumpstart. I just put that up there yesterday. Oh, okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a 21 day protocol to get people started. And yeah. it gives you options for morning sessions um, each day. So each day, if you do those sessions, whether you're doing it in the morning, the best to do, uh, like in all of our research studies, and we have a lot of different studies that people can look at, if they go to braintapresearch.com, they'll see them there. We mm -hmm. actually just published 12 of them in a book that's on Amazon now. So if they look up my name on Amazon, they'll see our research book that's mm -hmm. there. Um, but the, the results of it were always done, most of the results, like with the dementia studies and uh, the learning studies, uh, there's a difference. The dementia study, we had them do it three times a day. If you really want to get your brain working right, at least for 21 days, do that. Mm -hmm. They did it for six weeks. Uh -huh. So then, so th that's doing a morning session, which is, you can see the, the bundles called wake up. So if you, if you want to go there, you can just do that. And then we have, you can look at if you're in the wellness programs, or if you want to go into the power user and you want to select out a specific thing you want to work on, like, Let's say you want to work on your golf game. You can work on your golf game. You can work on your football game. Whatever it is, we have a lot of sports programs for for uh, their adults and kids. Listen to them basketball. Uh -huh. um, that's to be used. You can use those in the morning too, but they're twenty minutes. The morning sessions are typically around ten minutes. The mm -hmm. children's sessions are all ten minutes because the children don't should not need as much stress reduction as an adult who's mm -hmm. been carrying it around for 30 years, you know, right. or something like that. And then in the evening, we recommend doing one of our go to sleep. Now that sleep RX program that you showed when you were showing it, right. that was actually voted the best sleep app of the year in 2020 by men's wow. health magazine. So that's a, that's just part of the bundle. You get it with it. Now for children, we find that once a day is pretty good for them. You know, you have to select what's the best time for the child. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a child that is having some mental problems or is uh, hyperactive or has anything that they're trying to get you to put them on some kind of prescription drug or something like that, mm -hmm. um, I would recommend doing it two to three times a day with them as well at first. And what will happen is once they, after 21 days to six weeks, then they can listen to it just once a day and they'll start to get the result. Now in the clinics that we're in, we're in 2,600 clinics in America, they can't come in every day. So uh, a lot of our clinical studies are done with using it three times a week. So the reason I say every day is maybe something happens one day and you miss it. It's not the end of the world. You know, mm -hmm. the next day you just do it at that point, you know, um, you know, the, but what, what'll happen is the children, especially, and the adults, they'll start to learn this. I'm sure you found since you've been doing it, you go to sleep and you'll start practicing some of the techniques because your body, your brain is wondering what to do. And you say, well, we're, our eyes are closed. We're breathing. Let's just visualize our body relaxing. And, you know, so you start to learn the techniques for yourself mm -hmm. and then you can do it, you know, with or without the brain tip at that point. So mm -hmm. I found uh, I, I have an interesting personal uh, kind of observation. So uh, sometimes, uh, you know, when I have a very long working week and sometimes I have to stay up late and things like that, uh, I do get uh, somewhat similar to what the brain fog is. You know, I, I, I have so many things to do. I don't know where to start. It's almost like, uh, you know, analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm same time low energy and things like that but i found that uh, even when i need to push through for instance mean it doesn't mean like pull, pull on all nighter meaning like literally okay i need to get focused right now so i found myself that that little time without even you using coffee it's it's much faster for me so i have more of a willpower brain willpower of actually switch and and have a highly focused uh, working session so that's my personal kind of takeaway sure the sleep my, my sleep improved 
and all these things. So, uh, but uh, I don't use BrainTap, you know, for every little occasion, right? Because I'm I'm traveling, working yeah. here and there. Yeah. But I did find that little interesting change. I can get out of a brain fog a little bit faster. So something that I also noticed when I did uh, a lot more meditation, right? So if you meditate often, uh, then uh, your your focus, you make less mistakes. You you know you you kind of prioritize prioritize it a little bit better, uh, whatever that is, work life, uh, you name it. So I found the same kind of impact with the brain tap. So uh, I really, that's my personal feedback. Yeah, <laughs> for, for me, it's been uh, like huge uh, when I travel and there's jet lag. First of all, on the plane, yeah. I get anxious. I don't know if there's anyone out there that feels anxious sometimes, <laughs> but uh, I'm like, yeah. I have to hold his hand, <laughs> yeah, you know, when there's turbulence. But um, BrainTap has definitely been super helpful just doing like a session before flying. I would recommend and then um, for jet lag, like anywhere two hours, three hours, you know, difference um, just right before bed. And uh, I typically can kind of uh, surpass the jet lag pretty quickly, I find um, doing brain taps. So, so yeah. anyways, I'm, I'm super happy that uh, we had you over here. So I, I hope that people learned a tremendous amount of very, very useful stuff. Yeah. This is not very expensive but super super useful and uh if this can help your kid or yourself to get you know a better functionality in your life uh that would be you know all for for the better we love this device so uh and uh, that's why we invited dr porter and thank you for com you know committing your time to it i know you're a very busy man and uh so we're gonna leave uh, leave <laughs> all those uh, links in the description of where to find it where to get it we're gonna uh, link your website so people can find more information on research and uh, because i'm pretty sure people uh, you know when they woke up today they didn't really think that oh there's a device light frequency what is this all about yeah. so it's a very small amount of uh, percentage wise uh, amount of people know about things that can actually help your you or your kid without using pharma or or before you do other things Things. you know you should consider something like that mm -hmm. so hopefully it was helpful to you uh dr porter if you have any last words uh, to close it off uh, uh, you can uh, uh, jump in and uh thank you again yeah well i know that you know as people do their research to figure out what's best for them and their families uh, we're going to give you a link that you can share down below that'll give them access to free access to uh the one book is called thrive and overdrive which is my most recent book it's the full book. You can read it on your, your phone or your tablet, put it into Kindle, whatever you want to do. And you can learn more about the science that we're talking about here, but also just basically why it's so important that we do this brain fitness uh, program that we're talking about. And then you'll get access to uh, free access for 15 days on the app so they can start playing with it and start feeling the benefits for themselves. I think that's important. Very yeah, good, very absolutely. good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much yeah. again. So, uh, <laughs> well, thank you for uh, having me. No, yeah. I, I'm super excited for everyone to check this out. I think uh, anything you can do to improve your brain is is at the youngest age possible or wherever you're at in your life. It's it's truly going to make a difference. Yeah. Absolutely. So, thank you again. Thank, <laughs> thank you so you. much.